Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Adriano! Yeah, hell yeah! His face looks hilariously bright, and I don't know why. There is no light in front of me. You look handsome to me, sir. Handsome to me. Sick. Hell yeah, dude. I, works. I appreciate you joining, man. How, how, how are you today? How's your day been? Uh, good question. Just found out I'm going to need to start looking for a new day job soon, so oh, uh, no. hopefully... You can find something, or yeah. You know. What What are you sipping on right now? Kind of a jungle juice of bunch of stuff: Excellent. cranberry juice, Excellent. whiskey, something else, and a soda. All right, cool. Hell yeah, that's what's up, Mike. For for those uh, people watching that may not know who you are, can you properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are. Plug and promote anything and everything you like. Yeah, so I'm I'm based in Phoenix. I'm a guitarist. I do solo stuff, and I also perform with An Awful Mess. We were on the show, gosh, like a year, half a year ago. Something like that. So, Yeah, I do TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, mostly a bunch of dumb shit. Like, <laughs> if you follow me on social media, it's not just going to be music stuff. It's mostly going to be just the dumbest random crap and it's a lot of fun give me an example of some random stuff we could find on your tiktok that that has nothing to do with uh, music is that lego succulents thing that got two and a half million views best day of my life two and a half million damn that is a lot hell yeah damn son yeah so i i post it and I, i'm just hanging out later and i get an email that says you have 99 plus notifications on TikTok. I'm like, excuse me. So I go to it and it's like 9,000 views. And then it just kept growing. And now it's just been sitting at two and a half for a while. So is there any like particular tags you use for that, for that, that post? Or why do you think that one worked when other ones may not work the same way? That's a good question. And with content like that, you really just have to throw all of your dumb ideas at the wall and see what sticks because you, you never really know and I, I didn't even use that many hashtags um yeah there's like nothing special on that one it was just probably just legos hashtag comedy hashtag hmm i like that <laughs> one because it reminds me of the reddit page hell yeah. But yeah you just gotta just throw stuff out there and it doesn't matter how good it is because i tell a lot of my artist friends you're not selling short form videos but that's what gets people in the door so don't like just focus on the music stuff because it's boring and nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been making music, just in general? Like, and then could you could you explain what particular artist made you want to pick up a guitar in the first place? Actually, I picked up a fork. I have nothing to eat this lasagna with, so I guess I'll just set this down and eat this later. <laughs> that was a joke for Lizzie. Who loves the lasagna? <laughs> Saddest looking lasagna ever. <laughs> She gets it. So uh, pe people always ask me how long I've been doing stuff because I, I teach guitar and people always want to know that. And it depends on how I want people to perceive me. If I want them to perceive me as like super experienced, I tell them, well, I started playing when I was 12. And it's been 12 years since then. But really, I started when I was 12, played for a few years, and then quit for years. And then it wasn't until... 2018 2019 that i really started getting back into it i had been so out of just music i was, I was going to go to school i was going to get a master's degree i was going to be a professor but then that didn't i got sick of that and so I got and, back what, 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 what was your major going to be uh linguistics i was going to study languages cool can you speak a lot of languages no i'm terrible at it. <laughs> okay <laughs> For sure. That's probably why you went back to the music, I imagine. But uh, d just to yeah. re-top re on, on, on my question, like, if you can recall, yeah, I know you said 12, but even slightly prior to that, who made you want to pick up a guitar? It, it was really a funny story. So I was playing viola in school, and then my dad got a job at Fender, brought a guitar home for my little brother, but he didn't want to play it. And... You know, I think the answer to that question probably have to be my grandfather because he 
he played guitar on the streets of Puerto Rico to survive. Wow. And he tried to teach me a few things. And when I when my dad brought home the guitar, my brother didn't care about it. And I was like, you know what? It's kind of fun, I guess. And then my violin teacher that I was taking lessons with was going to be absent one week. And he told me ahead of time. And so he said that the, the guitar tech at the front desk could come in and we could just go through the violin lessons. But I said, wait, hang on a second. My dad brought this guitar home from work. What if I brought that and learned just a couple things on guitar? And he's like, sure, you, know, you decide whatever you want. So I had to make the decision. I brought the guitar and never brought the violin back. <laughs> wow. So shout out to Gramps right there. Hell yeah. Yeah. And then Ace Frehley was a big influence early on because my dad was a huge Kiss fan. So he showed me and my brother Kiss and the movies that Kiss did. <laughs> they did some movies. They did they do a couple movies cheesy. for sure. But uh, at the time, I feel like artists at the time, like especially in like the 60s, 70s, 80s, I imagine that would be like late 70s, early 80s for Kiss. But the, oh, yeah. those cheesy movies were were like they'd pop real quick just for like a new album release or something. But uh, how was how was Nam and how was meeting Joey Sturgis, who uh, has refused to be on this show? Uh, yeah, the Joey Sturgis story is actually really funny. So Nam was really cool. It's huge stuff everywhere. It's was that your first loud. time being there? Yeah. And I, I heard that in previous years, it was bigger and a lot louder because more companies would show up. A lot of companies didn't show up. Gibson didn't show up. Fender didn't show up. Most drum manufacturers didn't show up. Wow. But anyway, we're walking to a pretty remote section of the of the convention center to see a presentation by DB Technologies. Shout out to them. The rep was like the coolest nerd I've ever met. And so I'm walking and I turn the corner and then I just see joey in miami sitting there and i'm like oh shit i have to work up the courage to have this conversation right now because there's no other chance i'm going to get this i'm going to kick myself forever if i don't make this happen so i just like started talking to them it was super awkward and there was a little bit of a like they, like they didn't like say this but there was like the energy of like who the fuck are you and why are you talking to us it was a little awkward and we were trying to get on the same page about the disruptor plugin that just came out because i'd been told about it i was told it wasn't an amp sim but it, it is an amp sim, but they don't call it an amp sim. It was just like the, the biggest mess of a conversation until we finally got on track. But then we started talking. It was cool. We got a picture. Did you exchange any, like, I'd like to work with these, anything like that? Yeah. Didn't hear anything back yet, but whatever. Yeah, at least you shot your shot. That's that's all that counts. Yeah. You, you never know. I cannot you... fault myself for being shy and being ghosted by famous people is better than not having interacted with famous people at all. Is it is it hard at all balancing being a solo artist and performing while also being in an awful mess? Not really, because we don't have like weekly rehearsals all the time. We're all pretty tight on our parts. And we really only practice a couple times when we have a show coming up. Because Aaron's really busy and everyone else is really busy. And so I have a lot of time to do stuff. And I also don't really want to play my solo stuff live too often. I did once, only once, and that was just because the opportunity just sort of showed up. But I don't really seek that out. So it's not like I have a bunch of shows on my schedule there. For sure. I totally get it. Uh, Lizzie wants me to ask about the Tool Tribute Show. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if the band has a name because it's uh, just a bunch of different guys. I'll have to ask them what bands they're in. But um, they said that they needed a guitarist for a Tool Tribute set. And I was like, you know what? That sounds like a lot of fun. And it's been a lot of fun. I don't like learning a bunch of covers or cover sets but a tribute set is different because you can like get in the head of the guy who you're trying to copy like, i've been spending so many freaking hours trying to get the right tone for this and it's been not easy <laughs> every it's, time i think i'm close i'm just not there. tool is not an easy band to to do especially a tribute band like you got, got big board oh hell yeah you got to i mean they just do stuff that most bands don't do as far as like seeking tone and getting a unique weird sound and doing something different. Oh yeah. I was at a Mother's Day lunch right before the last practice and I'm sitting there writing charts for myself based on the tabs because it's been very difficult to like get the song structures down. I also bought this 
I bought a talk box. It just came in. Show. Yeah, it just came in today. Because there, there are a couple parts. Like, we're going to play Jambi, and there's this guitar solo, and it's with the talk box. And I'm like, you know what? I could get it to sound all right with the wah pedal, but that's lame. I want to have the fucking tube in my mouth. Yeah. So people that, can go, what the hell is he doing? That is cool. That reminds me. The first time I think I ever seen that was actually uh, Richie Sambora from uh, the Slippery When Wet is Slippery When Wet, I think, is it? John Bon Jovi album. Cool. But uh, so so Mike, do you do you play any video games? Yeah, sometimes. Mostly uh, Pokemon uh, No Man's Sky when it doesn't break. I want to get the new Zelda game at some point. Just got to find the time. I hear it's amazing, the new Zelda game. Yeah, I, I, I love Breath of the Wild, so I'm super excited about it. I heard that you may have brought Buffalo Sauce. Oh, uh, yeah, let me go get that real quick. Cool. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. <laughs> well, while we're waiting, why don't we go ahead and jam Rising Sun? Seven layer lasagna. Would that be a Stouffer's? No. For sure. <laughs> so you grab the sauce. I do. I do have some sauce. Can we see I it? know where to get like stupid spicy peppers, but I did not have a chance to get to that store this week. It's okay. The cool thing is you get to pick the trivia we're about to do. So what I need to know is what oh, cool. movie or TV show have you seen the most? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, it is impossible I'll stump you because you've seen it so many times. Uh, I think if you were to ask me any, and this is super nerdy, but any Star Wars or Transformers trivia, just because I'm autistic as hell and I have absorbed so much lore <laughs> Heard. over the years. And it, it's just there. Like my brain just absorbs freaking lore like a sponge. It's not, it's not useful in my life, but it's there. <laughs> Does this does this apply to all things Transformers? Probably. Can I go 1986 Transformers movie, the OG? Oh, I love that movie. Cool. The movie's great. <laughs> Give me just a second. All right, Mike, you got to pick it. Here we go. Right, go. Transformers trivia. 1986 Transformers movie. The very end of the film. Who is the leader of the Autobots? What is his name? Uh, Rodimus Prime. Rodimus is correct. Yeah. I got to do the hot sauce. It landed on random band shout out. Is there a band that maybe an awful mess or that you just really, really love locally in the scene that needs that needs to be shouted out right now? Uh, I think I would have to shout out Live Deliberate. They are releasing an EP very soon and we're performing with them. And I've performed with them sometimes when they need a second guitarist for a show. The music is really good. What, what genre would you say it is? It's pop punk, very okay. catchy, good good stuff. I'm not a huge pop punk fan, but that's like the songs are good. Is there is there a certain genre of music that you just kind of would never really want to cover? I mean, country music, but that's not really an interesting answer. I I just love covering a lot. Of, lately, I've been trying to do a lot of pop covers and stuff. Like I, I did the Clarity cover with Ruville, and that was really fun. Um, I'm glad that that's out. That turned out really well. I basically heard it somewhere random, and I was like, this would be so much fun. And I asked, I asked Rue if he wanted to cover it, and he's like, that song makes me depressed. I'm like, oh, shit. He's like, I'll still do it, though. But okay. <laughs> Sweet. I love that one. Have you ever had a worst show ever? As soon as, as, soon as the, the gig starts, you're playing, 
everything goes wrong. Can you go into detail what went wrong? That reminds me of this um, song I wrote when I was a teenager that's out there. It's called Worst Gig Ever. It's the it's just a funny random song. I'll have to like send it to Lizzie at some point. It's on YouTube. But it was sort of a combination of different things that have happened at gigs. Uh, the last time an awful mess did a gig, something in my circuitry stopped working and my gu- guitar t- signal cut out, which was really embarrassing. So I'm like, shit, I got to figure out how to. So you just lost this. all sound while yeah. playing? Yeah, something was, something got unplugged somewhere. And, you know, it's like you stop hearing the noise and you immediately freak out and you're like okay what's going on i thought the battery had died in my guitar which was good because i have always have my traveler as a backup now but i was just like i hate when that happens because there's so many things in the system that can go wrong and it's just ugh. but like overall shoot oh there was this so i was playing a show with a band years ago and this was new year's eve uh right before 2020 which is kind of funny not with an awful mess the different band and we were told we were going to play, we had to play all covers, which was really annoying because we didn't want to learn covers and we we're sitting there like really sick of it. And then we hear a band before us play Zombie, which was one of the songs we were going to cover. We're like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and then we get on and they tell us we can play whatever we want, which was like, cool. Everyone was gone, though. It was midnight on New Year's Eve. Nobody was there. And we were just so over it. Just like, did you still play do this set? Yeah, we still played, of course way to start off 2020 with you know what 2020 deserves holy shit <laughs> uh, at least you're a trooper and still and still played the show though like it's uh, oh yeah I, I myself i played a show to only a bartender once we we drove far for it too and we were like wow nobody showed up the bartender's uh, here we still play <laughs> an bar- awful mess was gonna do this um hot air balloon festival in quartzite and we are driving out there and we're like 20 minutes away from the festival and they're like yeah the wind is too much we're gonna have to cancel okay time to drive back home dang two hour drive yeah those... we, we were gonna get paid too and we're like ah yeah this is the worst we had to learn a bunch of covers for that too i was stressing the heck out because i had so many songs to learn for a three hour set and it didn't even happen but now now you can use them in a solo playing... set well, now we're playing a bunch of Starcross songs live because we learned a bunch of Starcross songs for that show, which is like the prequel to An Awful Mess. It's the whole universe that existed before me, before I was in, in on anyone's radar because everyone in the band is way older than me. But it was like, OK, I got to learn all these Starcross songs. And now we're like, hey, some of these songs are really good. We should maybe like redo some of them because I think after today was a was a Starcross song, I think, and we redid that. Well, my friend, I think this is going to be the most important question I've asked you all day. Oh, let's go. In Transformers 1986 movie, what is the name of the human that Hot Rod goes fishing with? Uh, Daniel. Mother <laughs> That is correct. Ah, yeah. uh, he's fresh. Damn it! What's the name of the main character? I don't know if they're hard or not, but that seemed like a hard one. It lands on dealer's choice, which is kind of an odd one. Uh, I'm just gonna throw it up and and take a shot with you, uh, Mike. What's what between now and December? What would you like to personally accomplish in your music career regarding any project you're involved in? That's a good question. I know with an awful mess, we have we're we're in talks with some pretty big producers locally in Phoenix, and so it'd be nice to uh, either release stuff or get some stuff started with him. So Jeremy, something I forget his last name, really stupid, but he did stuff with Evanescence. He's done stuff with Slipknot really cool that's big it'd also be really cool to just play bigger shows with an awful mess uh i think that's what we really need um for my solo stuff i have an album all tracked and i just have to figure out how it's going to get mixed and i can release it it's just been not a fun process and it's been taking so long that i'm kind of over it and just want to release do you do you diy everything 
as much as you can and then get it to the producer. And at that point, do you re-record it there or do you just kind of like oversee the little tweaks? Nah, I would record everything here. And the reason is because I am such an ass of a perfectionist that I, it would just be annoying to be in the studio with me. We'd be there literally all day for like one song. Uh, I had, so I, I knew a guy, Kyle Pinkard, who's a great, great mixer. I don't want it to seem like he's not great at what he does. We just have some creative differences. He needed some graphic design work done. I said I would do that because I do graphic design, mostly logos. And so I said I would do that. And then he offered to trade for music production. I'm like, well, I have a couple songs ready. I'd like to get an album going. And so that did sort of, I, I jumped into it. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Because I figured this will kick me into gear to finish these songs, to get a whole album out. And so tracked a bunch of stuff. We had all these songs. I tried to collaborate with some vocalists locally, but I got ghosted. Uh, that was an awful December and January, just like trying to get people. To, yeah, I'll totally send you stuff next week. And they didn't. It's like, cool, that wasted some songwriting times. I didn't have all the songs written. And then I got them all written. I got them all tracked. And I was sending them to Kyle. And But the stuff I was getting back just wasn't Quite what I had in mind. It was it was too. Do you do you want do you want to collab with other vocalists? Like, are you are you seeking? I would love to. Because there's a really good damn good vocalist in chat right now. Uh, his name's uh, Dakota. He's in a band called Atria, and he's he's quick. He's oh quick. yeah 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 yeah. You know what? We we should talk because I I do I do have time now to try try getting uh, some some stuff going. Because really, what happened was Polyphia released their last album, and. The music on the album is above average. I don't hate it. I think Renaissance is their best work. But the new album had so much collaboration with different singers. And I was like, shit, that's really cool. I got to do that. I got to do more with vocalists. Because whenever I try to pitch my solo stuff, all I hear is, I don't like instrumentals. And I, I know people who only listen to music for the lyrics. I don't listen to music for the lyrics. I listen to music mostly in Japanese these days. I don't care what they're singing about. Like, you could have the most heartfelt lyrics ever, but if the music behind it is boring, I don't like the song. I'm sorry, that's how I listen to music. But other people aren't like that. So I was like, shoot, I got to collab with more vocalists, which the Clarity cover was great. I love showing that to people. I didn't produce that one. Uh, that was Stephen McGuire. He's a local producer. He, his stuff was great. Um, he produces stuff by uh, Molly Marie, too. He also does Ruville and other stuff. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I want to collaborate with more vocalists because I want it to be something that people would actually listen to like more accessible stuff because as catchy as some riffs I write can be some people want to hear lyrics it's true and I you know I want I want I want to I want to do that stuff I like doing a lot of pop covers race recently I've been you know learning a lot of pop songs for some of my students and it's like you know what some of this is a lot of fun and I just want I want to make stuff that people are actually going to listen to. <laughs> we got time for two more questions. First, your three favorite J rock bands. Oh, uh, yeah, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas is like my favorite. They're band awesome ever. They're I, awesome. I, lo I love all their stuff. I remember watching Parasite is how I found out about them, and I, the intro was like, "This song is so good. It hits me in the nostalgia so hard." Let Me Hear is one of those songs that I love so much that I only listen to it on certain occasions. <laughs> but I, lo I love all their stuff. Uh, what else recently? Uh, Crowd of Rebellion is really good. They're really good. Uh, I think we played shoot. them today. We played them today, actually, uh, earlier. M what song is M1917, is that the name of the song? Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. That's a good one. Asian Kung Fu Generation has been big on my radar lately. I just want to give a shout out to the band called Vertex and Origin. They're a lot like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, but they're newer. Um, and they have like they have one album out, and I think it's really solid. And I think they should get more attention because I think their stuff is good. <laughs> Final question for you, sir, and I absolutely appreciate your time. Is what is the biggest mistake that you see other local bands making that it's not your place to be like, hey? It's a terrible idea. Don't do that. But you just see these bands making a mistake. 
or maybe a mistake you made yourself that you don't want somebody else to also make? Uh, I would say focusing too much of your, like focusing all of your content on your band, because I like to say people will not like your, people will not like you because of your content. They will like your content because of you. So if all of your content is just selling your band, selling your band, selling your band, all I see is you want to sell me things. You're annoying the shit out of me. Fuck your band. I'm not going to listen to you. Every conversation I have with some people is just about, hey, listen to my stuff. Follow me on Spotify. I don't use Spotify, so I can't. And it's just like I know I know so many people, robots, robots, no personality. All they talk about is their band. And it's like, are you a real person? <laughs> you got to make some content that's about you being a personality because I don't want to go see a band. I want to see my friend on stage. I don't want to see the band. I don't give a shit about your band. I give a shit about you. I give a shit about your band because of you. <laughs> nah, that's great like, advice. Have some personality. Yeah. Be a person. Be a person. Don't be a robot. I like that. Make dumb content that has nothing to do with your band. Get people in the door. If everything you post about your band, I snooze you on Facebook. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want to see you constantly push stuff. That totally makes sense. I get it. Hell yeah. Well, people dude, don't want to be sold to. It makes people feel bad. You got to be a human. You got to be normal. You got to live a little. But then be a little crazy on the side, too. Give them personality. I totally get it. That's a, that's very sound advice. Well, Mike, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for your time, sir. Uh, we we really? look forward to uh, basically everything you got going on in your world. Hopefully that album can come out fairly soon that you've been working on. Some songs on it will at least because I think the songs are good. The whole album, I don't know. I have to be doing it myself now, and that's just not been easy. But some stuff will come out. I'm Maybe you can just give us a little sprinkle and, and drop a single here in, in a couple months probably what i'll end up doing that's yeah. cool it's better than nothing it's better than us not getting any new material. absolutely absolutely it's not a loss it's it's the process and i always like to say your legacy will be what it will become don't focus on my story has to be this your story will be whatever the fuck it ends up being but you gotta just push on so that the story can get written i like that I need that uh, cranberry juice whiskey soda recipe, if you could. And, uh, sir, have yourself a fantastic day. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for partying. Michael Andriano of An Awful Mess! Give me a hell yeah! Cheers, brother. Thank have you. a great day. Thank you. Thanks, you.